in the ed you'll be called all sorts of names it's where you're going to see police you're going to see <laughs> yeah, security involved your jobs were not there for quite some time it was frustrating agencies were not talking things are very rapid like you find the turnaround for patients is very high one thing about the ed if you go to the ed befriend the healthcare system Thank you so much for coming. I'm really really glad that you decided to come to share your story with us. Um if you don't mind just introducing yourself to my audience, please go ahead. Thank you so much for having me here. My name is Gerard, but by my nickname as many know is Jerry. Uh I'm a nurse, worked in Kenya for about 3 years, but now moved to the UK. I came in April last mm. year, so yeah. I just clocked 1 year last month. How was the relocation process for you? I would say mine was a bit uh, scary because mm. I came when covid was at peak. Wow. So when I came before I even got my job offer it was kind of hectic because jobs were not there for quite some time it was frustrating agencies were not talking but then after a few months one approached me again they told me they have a job mm. did my interview came in So when I was coming in there was this quarantine period yeah of oh, 10 yeah. days oh. so I flew all the way from Nairobi lucky enough to go through Istanbul mm. so I was in Turkey for some few minutes and then I came to London I was housed in holiday in for 10 days wow it was quite a task there mm. thankfully for WhatsApp I could talk to friends talk yeah. to family video calls It was weird when somebody wants to serve you food they have to come and knock and then you just pick it from you, you felt like a prisoner you know yeah i can like imagine you to be inside there oh. and then that's when i got surprised uh, you know the lights you're opening them with the cards and all that it was not mm-hmm. used to this, you know? oh that was new <laughs> <laughs> was so it, was kind of, it was a kind of learning experience i remember i had to call the receptionist and i'm like the lights are not going on yeah my light <laughs> So she had to explain to me and then they were using all these sweet words my mm-hmm. lovely and all that so like yeah. oh, what's going on? Mm-hmm. so I was not used to all that language but now I'm used to it yeah so it was kind of uh, a scary location but at the end of it my agency made it good for me okay and they were calling in checking on me even when I was in quarantine mm-hmm. asking me whether I need anything after the 10 days I came to the hospital where I was housed for another three months Oh, so the hospital gave you accommodation for three months yeah it was free for three wow. good months okay was it shared yeah. or you had your own yeah it's a shared one but uh, i was lucky i got uh, an insult whereby in my own bathroom yeah but you share the facilities like the kitchen the fridge uh, the washing machines and the dryers it was a good experience because uh, i lived with the consultant nas radiographer so oh, wow. i got to know a few things through them yeah they taught me even how to use the radiator which i didn't know mm, yeah a lot of this is learned i kept cold <laughs> yeah my first night I kept cold i had to wear oh. jackets and socks and all that and then in the morning i just asked one of them and they were like to have a radiator did you turn it on i was like first of all what's that what is that <laughs> yeah and then they showed me so I think as much as I got the challenges I loved them because they made me grow. Yeah. Uh it also tests your patience. Yeah. It also tests uh, how much you can take in without breaking. Mm-hmm. And also knowing that it's you and you. So for that time I knew it was me and me. I have no mother to run to. Yeah. No friends to run to. <laughs> So it was a kind of a growing and a testing moment for me for my patients and I value that moment till they came into the UK I was fortunate enough to be undertaken OSCE training mm-hmm. for was it 6 weeks yeah for 6 weeks I was going for clinical trainings from Monday to Friday oh 8 to 5 so I by they would teach us on the steps so I was lucky enough to still do the six stations So I was lucky enough to be trained for like 3 6 good weeks. So you were doing it like a full-time job 8 to 5. Yeah, and I was still being paid at the same time. So I was I was oh, wow. being trained, being taught and I was yeah. still being paid. Most people have to work like uh you work as band 4 and then at the same time you're training for your OSCE. 
So it's really hard. Yeah. You are lucky. Yeah. Yeah, because I was comparing. There are friends of mine who are telling me the same thing. Like, mm-hmm. for them, they are working, and then they still have to undertake their own OSCE training. And it's even by themselves. Nobody is showing them. Wow. So that's when they have to use YouTube channels like Health, Health Education England, which I came to know about. Oh, wow. So after you passed your OSCE, now you started working as a registered nurse. Yeah. So I remember it was, on the, it was on the 10th of August. Yeah. Wow. That's when I got my pin. And that's when I started now working, now starting the induction process, you being attached to mentors. Mm -hmm. Um, But that day was purely being rotated around the hospital. Yeah. Being shown, this is the entrance. These are the various departments you'll be going to. This is where you go to rest. So it was like a full trip around the hospital. But that day was just so confusing because you're like, okay, you're seeing this, you're seeing that, you're seeing a hotel. Okay, it's not a hotel. So it's like Costa, you know Costa, right? Yeah. So you're seeing them and then you're just getting amused. Okay, it's still a public hospital. Okay. Mm-hmm. There were so many things that were just amusing me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so they're still incorporated into the hospital building. Mm-hmm. So that's when I was told there are things that, like this that make people relax, employees relax and just come, have coffee. You know, for us, such things do not make sense because well, we're not used to them. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, how can you coming coming to take coffee just make you relax and all that? <laughs> but slowly by slowly, I'm learning how to do it and it's kind of working for me too right now. Mm-hmm. So I think it's because we were not used to such things. Yeah. But now I am used to it. Now I know every corner of the hospital. Mm-hmm. But believe you me, there are times I'm told to take a patient to a certain home that I don't know where it is. Yeah. So now, after the first day of induction, then you had to start your secondary <clears throat> now, yeah? Yeah, so I was attached to healthcare assistant okay. for two weeks. Oh. So I had to know what the healthcare assistant can do because I was told I'll be doing more delegation to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you need to know their scope. You need to know what they can do, what they cannot do. Yeah. And there are different types of HCAs as well. Mm-hmm. There's some who can do bloods, yeah. ECGs, uh, observations. Mm-hmm. There are some who cannot even do the observation, bloods or ECG. Mm-hmm. Their main work is to help patient with basic care. Yeah. Like uh, feeding, toileting, changing mm-hmm. of beds and all that. But mostly in the ED, you find most of them are very skilled. They can do all those things, like they can do bloods, they can do ECGs. I had my signatures, you know, the signatures that you have to take. Oh, yeah. Because your task, when you come in, you're told, this is a booklet. Mm -hmm. You need to be supervised on taking bloods. You need to be supervised on uh, cannulation. Mm -hmm. Some of them were being signed off by by HCAs. By HCAs, yeah. So I was lucky I was attached to one who was very excellent at her job. Mm -hmm. Uh, She used to cannulate some of the hard cannulations. You as a nurse, you have to call her. Mm -hmm. So I was attached for two weeks with her so that I can be able to know what is the job description. Yeah. Which was very good. And then after that, I was attached to a nurse that was going for four weeks. Okay. Now, as a nurse, you have to see how do they work when they come in, yeah. uh, what do they do first. You see the medications, how they give the medications, how they check patient identification. Yeah. In the ED, it's very rapid, like imagine, things can yeah. just flip. Mm. I don't know whether to tell how a normal day is like. So you come in, mm. go, you should be there five minutes prior to the report. So you come in, make sure you change proper mm. uniform, go to the report room. That's where you get your band aids or band seven coming to tell you where you're going to be working. Mm-hmm. So in my department, we have like nine sections. Okay. So all of you can be working the ED, but different sections of the ED. Mm-hmm. So there are people who work in the emergents, like in the resuscitation rooms. There are people yeah. who work in the acute rooms. There are people who work in the streaming areas whereby they get patients in, do the basic stuff like bloods, ECG, mm-hmm. and observation, and then send them to the acute places where they are monitored. Okay. There are also places whereby we have the respiratory care. Patients who come in with query COVID, difficulty breathing, low saturations, there are places that they are put, and we have the patients that are coming in, patients with minor injuries, mm-hmm. patients who have 
who need emergency care but can go home on the same day so it's called medical days medical mm. same day emergency care patient ratio is very good in the ed that's mm-hmm. what i can say what is that because i'm always curious about that <laughs> so in my trust i can get maximum is sometimes four really in ed four wow. there's a time you get five mm-hmm. that's great yes, actually and- Yeah. Yes, we just have to make sure the observations are done, bloods are done, ECG is done, the due medications. Yeah. And then transfers to happen in case you're going to CT scan, X-ray. Yeah. And sometimes here radiological tests, sometimes they just need accompaniment of a HCA. Mm, yeah. Of which most of them are very skilled here, so you can send a HCA with a port. Yeah. Yes. And the porters most of them are also very very sharp. <laughs> they'll be like i cannot go with this patient without a mask mm-hmm. so like yes i'm offering you this hc but the portal will be like no i need a mask especially when they know they're going to do the ctpa for patients with uh, query pulmonary embolism they'll be like no i need a mask <laughs> yeah. because they're so good such that they've been told what this test checks for mm-hmm. and why you would need a mask yeah they know something may happen And Yeah, and also if you need contrast, they'll be like, I need a doctor. Wow. So sometimes they prompt you because sometimes you might be, I'm lucky enough to coordinate sometimes. Like sometimes I'm, I'm the one coordinating a shift. Mm-hmm. So I might forget that this patient needs to go with a doctor. So sometimes they even prompt you because sometimes they might be thinking of 13 patients. Yeah. So sometimes they come and prompt you and tell you, please then, they need a doctor because sometimes you don't know what the doctor has gone to write they write ct maybe without contrast so yeah. sometimes with contrast they have to get a doctor mm-hmm. but things are very rapid like you find the turnaround for patients is very high yeah, yeah. so sometimes you're told move this patient to this side move patients to this side yeah but i really enjoy it i like not knowing how my day is going to be i think that's why i'm in the ed you like that I like, I like the impulse things i yeah. like uh, emergency care that's why i even specialized in emergency care before i came uh, to the uk okay because that's how deep i was into emergency care mm. the lucky thing about uh, being in the ed in the uk i would say you're next to consultants so it's not like kenya where by consultants are away like you have to really call them well, yeah yeah your consultant is in charge of a shift mm-hmm. so in case of anything the consultant is there mm-hmm. you find they are the junior specialist doctors the specialist nurses are there advanced mm-hmm. clinical practitioners are there mm-hmm. so you get to learn so many things through them because it's more of teamwork mm-hmm. specialists are there yeah so i find my knowledge being more like growing more than when i was back home because right now mm. i don't have to be told this person needs a specialist they have to go to icu and then the icu people are the one who gets to learn everything so here <laughs> when they need yeah i learn so many things because the consultant will come they'll tell you this patient needs this 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 and i'll be able to learn a few things so i'm getting to widen my knowledge yeah. so much even without going to school So school here will be a bonus for me because I'm already learning so many things yeah. just by observing and seeing and being next to the consultant, the specialist, the advanced nurses, mm. the specialist. Yeah. So I'm finding myself in an environment whereby I'm learning a lot. Mm. As much as it is very rapid, I'm getting to know a lot what's going on and understanding why this test is done for this patient. Mm. So one of the challenges being in the ED is that things can be so fast sometimes it can get stressing. Yeah. Like you find that uh you have four patients and the next 30 minutes all your patients will be moved and you get another new set of patients. Mm-hmm. Uh sometimes you might not be able to go for your break on time. Yeah. Because of the workload. Uh sometimes uh you find that uh you have asked for help mm-hmm. but the help you've been given this nurse is not very skilled enough to like let's say you've asked for help this nurse comes they're like have not been signed off on medication oh. 
So now that will be a challenge because yes, they can give oral medication, but they cannot give intravenous oh, medications. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of limited. So you have to tell them, okay, now do this and this and this. Mm-hmm. One thing about the ED, if you go to the ED, befriend the healthcare assistants. They will make your work oh. easier. Oh, really? Yes, they know. So many <laughs> they know yeah. so many things. They know even the patient who's supposed to be observed like after every 15 minutes. They'll come and tell you and they'll escalate it to you. They'll tell you, Nisi, this patient is a news of eight. And they'll tell you why. Because of the oxygen levels, the respirations. So it's just it's just not telling you this patient is a news of eight. They'll tell you why. Yeah. And then after that, they'll document and write your name. Yeah, we told her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then after that, you now for you, you have to escalate again. Yeah. Oh my. But I feel like I'm I'm scared of working in ED, but I think if I go there and work maybe for a couple of weeks, I'll get used to how things go there, because it just seems like too much chaos for me, especially after being in ICU for a while, where everything is organized and you have all your stuff mm. there, you have your patients, and you know that an emergency could happen. But with you guys, it's just happening all the time. How do you cope yeah. with that? So one thing about the chaos in A&D is that remember you're not working alone. Mm-hmm. You're always working with other people involved. Yeah. And in a, in a shift, you always have a coordinator. Mm-hmm. And the coordinator is always there. The nurse in charge is always there. Remember the doctors are also there. So there are things like, let's say, you're trying to give a sepsis treatment yeah. to a patient like let's say you have to start antibiotics oxygen fluids catheterize make sure the fluid input and output mm. and then there's a doctor coming to tell you please could you take troponins for uh, maybe a patient in bed so and so you're like please i cannot do that right now because i have this patient here who i have to start sepsis treatment you don't mind could you just please take the blood samples Mm-hmm. Because right now I'm not I'm not able to take the blood samples. Yeah. If not, just ask them to delegate to somebody else because you're not able to do it. If you decide to carry everything by your back, yeah, you're going to be stressed the whole day. The things you'll not be able to do. Don't be scared to say no. Mm-hmm. Don't look bad. Yeah. Some people fear saying no because they'll be like they'll be tainted as a bad nurse. But as for me, I've learned. When I first came in, I tried to do everything, 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 everything. I wanted, by the time I'm handing over, I'm handing over, everything is done. That's when I came to realize I'm putting too much pressure on myself. Yeah. What I need to do, I just need to prioritize my care. Yeah. Who needs my care urgently? Another thing, if you're not coping, please tell the coordinator, I'm not coping. Mm-hmm. I need help with this and this and this. Yeah. Some of them will come down. And let's say if their person is a coordinator, they'll be like, what help do you need? Mm-hmm. Be like, I have this, this, I want to do this. Could you please help me with this medications for this and this? Yeah. Then they'll help you. If it's uh, something, let's say, to do with uh, a bit of toileting mm-hmm. and you have medications or other things to give, just delegate that to the head CA. Mm-hmm. Kindly ask them, please, could you please help me with this? And sometimes when you start a shift, it's good you talk to your HCA if you've been allocated a HCA to work with you. Mm-hmm. Ask them what what is your scope? What yeah. can you do? Can you do? What mm-hmm. can you not do? How would you like us to work? How would you want me to help you? Mm-hmm. And this is how you I would want you to help me. So if you create that rapport in the morning, yeah, things will be. the time things are going by, things will be very easy and things will be okay. It yeah. might be a stressful shift, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a good shift. So me, I would say at the end of the day, how to cope with challenges in the ED, speak up. If it's your time to go for a break yeah. and you feel dizzy, you feel as if you're not able to work anymore, please speak up. Just say, could I just please go for my break because I'm, I'm about to collapse. I'm feeling dizzy. Mm-hmm. But if you decide to continue working, working like, I want to do this before I go for my break, you'll do it and by the time you finish, you'll be told, this other patient. Yeah. Like, oh. Have good communication with your in-charges. Yeah. And uh, just make sure you're not carrying the burden home. Mm-hmm. Because uh, sometimes you come home and you keep thinking about the patients and all that. It's, it's a 24-hour care. That's why we have handovers. That's why we have S bar. 
Yeah. At the end of the day, there is recommendation down there. You'll be telling them about a patient and then go down there at the recommendation. This is mm-hmm. what I've not been able to do. I've studied the fluids. I've not been able to catheterize. Mm-hmm. So the person coming in will be like, oh, this has been done. Yeah. I just need to catheterize this patient. Mm-hmm. And also, if one would want to come to the ED and you're really scared about the ED, mm-hmm. I would suggest you get to have the email of the nurse in charge of the ED. Mm-hmm. Tell them you just want to come in shadow. Okay. For about two hours, three mm-hmm. hours. If you feel like half day. Most Mondays are usually busy, so I would tell somebody to choose to go the ED on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> just to shadow because that's when the care is. I don't know whether everybody postponed every oh, about the weekend. Over the weekend, uh-huh. then there'll be Mondays because Mondays is so busy. Sometimes we have to hold ambulances outside. Oh wow! We have no space to keep the patients. In the ED, you'll be called all sorts of names. You'll be insulted. So don't let that get into your head because people are frustrated. Some of them understand them; they're sick. Because you'll get all sorts of patients. You'll get mental health patients, get yeah. pediatric patients, you'll get adult patients. And the mental health patients, especially, some of them will be very rude to you. Mm-hmm. So don't take it to heart. You just treat them like any regular patient that you have. Show them the care that you would. In case they they are getting out of hand, we always call the security. Uh-huh. We have the security always come in. Mm-hmm. So in the ED, that's where you're going to see police. You're going to see <laughs> yeah, security involved. You're going to see patients with carers. Yeah. You, like the ED makes you see all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, I would like somebody to be able to separate their social life, their yeah. work life. Yeah. When you're out of the hospital, please drop everything there yeah go home rest mm-hmm. and do some things like the way you do your travel so mm-hmm. if you're you're a fan of traveling just yeah, book a holiday travel because mm-hmm. i've seen at least here it's not that expensive to get an airbnb yeah stay there for a few days mm-hmm. uh, unwind but stop putting pressure on yourself so in the ed you don't need to put pressure on yourself Mm-hmm. Expose yourself. Talk to your talk to the manager in charge. Tell them I'm interested in the ED, mm-hmm. but I would like to shut off for just a few hours because they won't decline you. Another thing, another department that would help somebody is practice development or staff development. Every NHS trust has that. Mm-hmm. You can talk to them. Tell them I would like an experience in the ED, but I don't want to go in as one of the numbers. Yeah, I would want to go in as shadowing. I want to be exposed. I want to see how it is. And then they will attach you to the best that they know. Because even here we have nurses who are allowed to mentor others. It's not like everybody can mentor anybody. There are official nurses who can be able to mentor others. So when you come in, you see how things go by. And then ask yourself, is this is this something I could try? Mm. The worst part is that if you go in without having exposed yourself, sometimes you'll end up frustrated. Yeah. Because you'll be told, Nisi, that patient is waiting for antibiotics. Nisi, that patient is uh, wants some toilet in Nisi. This patient is a news of AIDS. And then you'll be like, oh my God, what's (laughs) happening? (laughs) So if you do not know how to ask for help and talk to your colleagues, Mm. that's how you'll end up getting frustrated, especially if you're from ICU or the wards whereby there is a manner in which things go by. Yeah. You come to the ED, we have no manner. You'll be finishing on this patient, this patient is coming in. You'll be told they need a group and cross match, please, they're bleeding. And then you'll be like, oh my God. Yeah. So you just have to know how to prioritize and triage your patients. You've been given four patients, yeah. but at, at the end of the day, have your own triaging as well. Mm. Who is a priority to me here? Uh, How can I get help from other people? Mm. And by you exposing yourself, like I was telling you, come for some few three hours, even knowing the department, the layout, how it is. Mm. This is where the most sick patients are in. Yeah. This is where the patients who just need acute monitoring and they are maybe awaiting beds. 
These are patients who need respiratory care. These are the patients who are just coming in. So if you have that basic knowledge when you're going in, yeah, I think it will make it easier for you. And if you know how to create rapport, mm-hmm. talk to talk to your fellow nurses because as per here, we still have to talk to our fellow nurses because you need signing of IV medications. Yeah, okay. not like you, whereby you're trusted. <laughs> antibiotics they know you've given the antibiotics you don't yeah. need to sign it again for us we are still doing the double checking oh wait you mean you're double signing your iv medication yes we are still oh, wow. there oh oh <laughs> my yeah God. so we are still yet to reach yeah. where you guys are oh wow so if you do not create that rapport and it, it's just wow. going to be a hostile environment for you mm-hmm. So I think those those are the things like just make sure you are able to delegate. Yeah. You are able to triage your patients. You are able to prioritize your patients, and you are able to ask for help. Yeah. Make sure you're taking care of yourself by going for breaks. Yeah. If your bladder is full, it's full. Please oh, just ask for to go. Yeah. And also hydrate. Make sure you're hydrating. Mm-hmm. Don't go a whole day without taking water. Yeah. All in the name of working. You need to hydrate yourself because if it's not you, who else will be working? Nobody. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be one of those patients. So uh, yeah, you'll be one of those patients, and uh, you won't be able to work. Mm. And it will be so sad if you're not taking care of yourself, and then you end up being a patient. Mm. Yeah. So I'd say if you prioritize yourself, take mm. care of yourself, be able to speak up. Because I've come to learn in this country, you speak up. It's not like back home yeah, whereby home. you are told to endure everything. <laughs> Let's see whether you can work under pressure yeah. and all those things. No. In this country, you just have to speak up. Say, these are the challenges. This is what I'm going through. Yeah. We are having even also us like, let's say on a typical day, we have shortage in the ED as bad. People call in sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe sometimes the staffing is just not up to the ratio. Yeah. The nurses who just come in and already have uh, this scared attitude because ED has been said to be one of the craziest places to be in. But some of them, they come in and then they're like, wow. Okay. Mm. And some even who end up applying for vacancies. Oh, wow. ED. I know of a few who mm. decided to apply for vacancies. And now they're in the ED because they're like, the experience I had was good. Mm-hmm. I came to learn the ED is something I can take. Yeah. So as much as there are people who fear the ED, there are people who just come in as well, they like the environment and then they're like, this is where I want to be. And they apply for vacancies and that's how they get. Yeah, um, you mentioned breaks. I'm just curious how many breaks you guys get. How long are your breaks? They are very short, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so for the morning break is 15 minutes. Oh, okay. And uh, your lunch break is 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. So typically a full 12 hour shift, you'll be off work for only 45 minutes. Really? You don't have an evening evening break? Nope, for us we do not have. Oh. And there are also timings because I compare my friends and other trusts. Their timings are so different and more. Yeah, yeah. More break mm-hmm. Because they have 15 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes and 15 minutes in the evening. Yeah. Yeah, but for us, it's totally different. But I think they're working on it because there have been so many complaints. Mm -hmm. Mm, And then I think now they are just trying to make stuff stay as well. So they're just trying to work around a few things because the turnover is still also very high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think they will change it. I don't know whether it's going to be soon, but that's what we are working with as per now. Well, let's hope things get better. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for coming to share your story with us. Honestly, I've learned a lot because um, working in ED is something I've always toyed with in my mind. Although I'm so scared because I, when I go there, I don't know what's going to happen. But I think I will one of these days go and do like a shadow shift or something mm-hmm. like that. I'll let you know how it goes, although I'm not sure when that will happen. <laughs> but thank you so much for sharing. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Oh.